G'day guys and welcome to part one of the Ideal Load. This episode is the first of a three part series on the Ideal Load. In this series we are going to explain what load is, the importance of correct load, how to correctly manipulate load and how to monitor your loads. But what is load? Workload can be interpreted as a stimulus that causes a disturbance of homeostasis, which is restored during recovery from training. To measure this stimulus, workload is categorised into two distinct groups, the external workload and the internal workload. The external workload represents the work completed during training and games, for example, distance covered, average speed or mean power output. The internal workload represents the psychophysiological response, or the cost, experienced by each athlete during training and games, which can be measured by heart rate or session rating of perceived exertion. After each training stimulus, the athlete enters a period of fatigue. Now the length of this fatigue period is dependent on the athlete's response to each session. It's in this period of fatigue where the stress system, such as the muscular, the cardiovascular, adapts to the training stimulus and returns to a level of non-fatigue, which is homeostasis. Fortunately, our body's adaptation systems do not precisely know when to stop returning back to homeostasis and they overcompensate. This process leaves the trained system in a state that exceeds that of the levels of pre-training. This adaptation mechanism is known as supercompensation. Now in order to maximise the benefits of this supercompensation, it's important to apply the next training stimulus at the peak of the effect. This process is known as progressive overload. This long-term training process reflects the general adaptation syndrome theory by Hans Solyer in 1950 and is purported to allow the athlete to train at greater loads over time. If no training stimulus is applied, then the athlete will return back to pre-training levels of performance. Alternatively, if the next training stimulus is applied too soon, then they'll enter a state of further fatigue, known as overtraining, causing severe reductions in performance and prolonging recovery. Now it's clear that the ideal load across all sports is a highly dynamic and specific process, changing constantly to keep up with the rigours of the competitive schedule. The ideal training load can change day to day, week to week, and is dependent on the response and well-being of the athlete, and the phase of the competitive season. It's necessary to quantify and understand player workloads to allow for consistent monitoring of athlete workloads and importantly, to enable the design of optimal training programs that are specific to each individual. For a little more in-depth information and a list of references, check out the accompanying blog to this video on our website. In the next Ideal Load episode, we'll discuss periodisation and provide some examples of how this might be implemented across a season of team sport. In the final Ideal Load episode, we will discuss in detail how to effectively monitor your training loads using different technologies and methodologies that are easily implemented. Thanks for watching.